Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. Recently, on April 19, 2023, I quietly celebrated my one-year anniversary of formally quitting my PhD and going full-time into coaching and entrepreneurship. So for today, I want to unpack some of the most profound lessons that I learned in business, career, and life in the past year since becoming a full-time entrepreneur. And there's a lot to expand on for today, so let's just keep the intro really, really short and dive right into it. All right, so the first lesson I want to talk about is, do you really care about being an entrepreneur? So the first thing I learned over the past year is to develop this new sort of relationship with my business. And specifically now, I see my business as a as truly a long-term, lifelong passion project that I'm excited to continue to build and carve out even more time to practice my craft as a coach and as an entrepreneur. And even though... There are clearly a lot of highs and lows that are inevitable in your journey as an entrepreneur. Honestly, even now, after four plus years of doing this, I really learned to even enjoy the journey even more than when I first started this journey. So I think previously I was a lot more flexible and lenient on the following, but now I'm a lot more firm on my stance on this. So The specific stance I want to state for today is that I honestly, I personally would not encourage someone to pursue entrepreneurship unless you're really committed to this for the long term. Because, you know, as I just mentioned, it's been four plus years since I started my own business and I've seen a lot of people quit and give up after six months, one year, two years. And I think what happens is that a lot of people, they like the idea of calling themselves an entrepreneur, but They're not willing to endure the mental stamina that is required to keep going, even when you're disappointed by your results. And often people will just resort to blaming external circumstances and so on. And I've just seen a lot of people, they want the title and the Instagram clout of being an entrepreneur, but they're really resistant towards leaning into the messiness that is often expected in your journey as an entrepreneur, right? And I think I also hear a lot of people say that they they wish they can just coach clients and not have to worry about the marketing and sales part of their business. But then the more I think about this sentiment, the more I just become curious about like, does this person even care about being an entrepreneur, right? Which is different from a coach, right? It's because that includes the business components of it, right? The steps required to build a successful business. Because if someone doesn't want to commit to the art and science of building a business, then are they really dedicated to growing a business and being an entrepreneur, right? Because a lot of people, they truly love the practice of coaching, but your your purpose, so to speak, it might not actually require you to be an entrepreneur in order to do your, your purpose work, right? You can do a craft that you're so passionate about without having to be an entrepreneur, right? So for example, you can just be a coach as part of a larger organization, right? So therefore you don't have to go and work on the marketing and selling part of growing a business. You can still do the craft that you truly care about because building a business truly does require skills and commitment. And if we're just so often just consumed with feelings of being discouraged and defeated by the marketing and sales component of growing a business, then I'm going to venture to say, perhaps don't be an entrepreneur. Find another way to do the work that you truly care about without having to go through the the pains of entrepreneurship, right? Don't put yourself in a situation where all you do is feel discouraged and defeated about your, your lack of results, right? Because truly, I do think that you can do the thing that you love without being an entrepreneur. So That's why the first lesson that I learned in the past year of being a full-time coach and entrepreneur is to really be committed to the, the art and science of being an entrepreneur, a business owner, someone who is willing to do the work of building my business, right? And this this nicely ties in with the second lesson that I learned, which is con- to, to continue to sharpen certain skills to grow your business. Now, While I do believe that there are so many skills that we can choose to learn and hone, I don't think it is necessary to learn all the possible skills that can help you grow your business. That said, I do believe that being an entrepreneur will require us to develop and sharpen certain skills and learn to be really, really good at those skills of our own choice, 
right? But the thing is, for many of us, we we don't like being not good at things, right? And oftentimes, a lot of the skills that we want to hone within the context of growing your business, we are going to be absolutely shit at them when we're just starting, right? And the mastery of skills, like skills related to marketing and sales in your business, like it's going to take time and repeated practice and a hell of a lot of mindset and identity work, right? And throughout the process of not being good at something, it also it's probably going to bring up a lot of shitty thoughts about yourself, like comparisons and feeling like you should have results by now because you've been doing this work for six months, but you still haven't signed your first three clients or feeling like you're not likable or popular enough and so on, right? And when we're not yet good at something, it can often, it can feel really painful, right? Because of those thoughts that that we, we bring up about ourselves. But the good news is that we can always learn and sharpen skills. So for myself, I learned to really commit to three particular skills this past year in my business. And I've also learned a lot about how I can teach these skills to our clients inside our coaching container. So the first skill is thought leadership, specifically how to hone and express your thought leadership to attract clients to you and also to differentiate yourself from all the other people doing the same thing as you. Skill number two soft launching, specifically learning to talk about your offer and how you can help your clients in a way that compels people to actually book a sales call with you and work with you, right? It's about creating the soft launch content that people need to see and hear in order to understand the value of your offer right now. It's about creating soft launch content that handles objections and answers the questions that people might have about working with you right? And the third skill is building an honest, genuine, and uniquely differentiated brand, which in my books is just another way of saying defining your own identity because your personal brand is an expression of who you are and what you believe about yourself, right? And through the skills of thought leadership and self-launching, you're also intentionally cultivating that brand, but ultimately building a brand really does come down to knowing what you are and who you are internally, and then expressing that outwards externally. And these are the skill sets that I found to work beautifully for myself and for our clients. So for anyone who wants to hone in on these particular skill sets and also build a coaching business and career that you're proud of, I would love to support you in making this happen. So we are currently accepting clients inside our program, the Side Hustle Club, which is a six-month weekly one-to-one program, which also has weekly group coaching, monthly workshops, and a very awesome private client portal with a lot of resources and our signature curriculum. And again, the specific skills that we focus on inside the program include becoming known for your unique thought leadership, learning how to soft launch your coaching offer, and ultimately sign clients, and also building a uniquely differentiated brand. So these are the skills that will play a profound role in your journey of building a coaching business and career, and also help you create both the demand and impact that you wish to create. So ultimately, we are going to work on these skills that will help you with your end goal of helping more people. And for all the details and to apply to the program, you can head on over to CherylTheory.com slash program. And then afterwards, we will schedule a sales call to chat further about your business, your vision, any challenges that you might have encountered so far in your journey, and also get to know one another and to answer any questions that you might have about working together. And I cannot wait to see you inside our program. So anyways, with that said, that is the second pivotal lesson that I've learned in the past year, which is to really get really good at certain skill sets that will help you pave your long-term lifetime career as a coach and entrepreneur. And yes, there are going to be times and oftentimes extended periods of time where you're going to suck at certain skills. But please, if this is a career that you want to build for the learn the long term, please be willing to be bad at these skills so that you can get really, really good at them and ultimately create the income and impact that you wish to make in this world. All right, now I want to make a hard pivot and talk about the third lesson, which is about how we are all going to experience very, very human experiences and human emotions, even if you're full-time in your business meaning we're all going to struggle and sometimes struggle deeply no matter what your business looks like. So for quite a while after I decided to formally quit my PhD and even actually before that, for two or so months before I actually submitted my my withdrawal, with, withdrawal, withdrawal? Okay, I'm, resonation. 
<laughs> I'm having a hard time pronouncing the word. Okay, anyway, so before I formally quit, okay, it was it was a really emotionally and personally difficult period period of time for me. And there were a number of personal life events, decisions, identity crises, marriage problems, friendship problems, and just other financial and logistical stressors that were all happening simultaneously for me personally. And as a result, I I really I really had a hard time and I could see myself feeling very, very depressed during this time. And it was compounded by the frequent episodes of anxiety and panic attacks during that time frame. And my my physical body also responded very poorly to those stressors. And I actually developed two noticeably large balding spots on my head because of stress. And the two key words I would use to describe that that time frame after becoming a full-time entrepreneur was number one, shame. I felt like I shouldn't be feeling so so heavy, so sad, so anxious, depressed, unmotivated, defeated, especially because like in my mind, I was like from the outside looking in, I was living so many people's dream life. I was newly married. I was doing my business full time. I just finished the previous year at six figures in my business, even as a side hustle and so much more. And I, I felt like I shouldn't be feeling all that I was feeling. And consequently, I felt a lot of shame for what I, I truly was experiencing. And number two, I also felt a lack of control. I felt like I had no control and I even wanted to to just like quit my business altogether because I felt like I no longer had the capacity to create for others or to give to others because I was just in such a dark place. And to be to be very honest, right, there were a lot of moments during that time frame where I almost literally just like went on Stripe and like wanted to refund all of my clients and just delete everything and just disappear and hibernate because I really felt like I, I I didn't have control over anything even my own business and because internally and in my personal life there was so much going on it made sense why my external business results also reflected my internal state and there were months in 2022 where I didn't make any new sales at all right and now that time has passed and I had time to process and work through a lot of those stressors and things that I was going through Life does look very different now, but that said, there were two very, very profound lessons that I learned during this particular season of my life in the past year. So the first is that I can now see that we, we're we all very prone to gaslighting ourselves, both in business and in life. For me, I kept telling myself that I shouldn't be feeling XYZ emotions because I had so much good things happening for me. I shouldn't be thinking xyz thoughts because i'm literally living someone else's dream life i shouldn't be like this because i have everything i need to live comfortably but over the past year and i think it took around around a good seven months to really arrive at this place where i finally felt accepting of it is okay that i feel this way i get to feel this it is valid i don't have to gaslight myself i get to experience all of these feelings and i'm allowed to experience them right? And when I finally learned to embrace that I'm allowed to feel whatever I was feeling, and I don't need to shame myself for feeling or thinking whatever I was feeling and thinking, I was finally then able to unwind and unbind from the shame. And then that that, that led me to a second very profound lesson, which now actually really influences how I coach my clients, which is there's always options in every difficult situation. There really are always options. But let's be honest, there's usually no perfect option. And I think I personally, like what I really struggled with personally during that time frame, because of just all the stressors that were happening, right? So although I was intellectually able to recognize that there were options in every stressful situation, I was resistant because none of the options seemed like 100% optimal. <laughs> they all had pros and cons, right? And and I was fixated on the cons. But The thing I didn't quite realize at the time was that I did have options and I did have control over which option to try. I I didn't recognize at the time that I wasn't as powerless as I thought. But this realization over time, I started to really understand it. And I I now also started to apply that belief of I I have control over my situation in multiple parts of my life and business. And I even now apply it to how I view my thoughts and my mindset, which is I have control over my thoughts because for a lot of the months over the past year, I felt like I had no control over how I was feeling and how my body was reacting to stress and so on. But what I now realize is I always have the power to retell the story about myself and my situation. I always have power to lean into gratitude. 
I always have the power to not blame, right? To not blame my anxiety and depression and panic attacks for my results, right? So the realization of how we always have more control than we think, it now shapes how I coach my clients and, and their thoughts about failure, right? So for example, I now am so much more confident in helping my clients get back up even when they fail. If a client, for example, is going through their own client drought period in their business, I know how to coach them through it, right? And the crazy thing is I wouldn't be able to confidently say this, that to confidently say that I can do this if it wasn't for me going through it first last year, right? My own experiences of feeling powerless in my business, that's, that's because I was willing to go first. And at times it means being willing to fall first and fail first, but also being willing to get up first. And that's why I'm now a much better coach for my clients. All of the struggles that I went through in my business and in my personal life last year, they've now shaped who I am as a coach a year later. Okay. So now that a year has passed, now that I've quit my PhD for a full year now, and I've been full-time in my business, I can clearly see that we're literally just getting started. And it's also now just so much clearer to me what I want to do in this world, how I want to help people. And I've also come to realize that my previous dream when I was side hustling and also pursuing my PhD in a career in research, that was just a stepping stone for me to what I'm embarking on next. And I think for a while I was grieving that shedding of a really comfortable identity as a side hustler. And now that I process all those emotions, I'm really allowing myself to lean into the bigger vision that I have for myself as an, entre as an entrepreneur and taking the next steps to making that vision happen. And this third lesson segues very nicely to the fourth lesson, which is it is very natural and very, very common to want to quit your business, right? Because over the past year, I noticed that whenever life things was happening, and I felt so powerless in that life situation, it seemed like I wanted to then try to like take my power back through my business and then make some sort of like drastic decision in my business. So I actually observed that there were so many times where whenever something in my life happened, I would then quickly spiral into like, I need to shut my business down. <laughs> like I literally like needed to like, so in response to a life situation happening, I felt like I needed to take action or make some sort of drastic decision in my business. And oftentimes that looked like I wanted to burn my business to the ground. And it took me quite a bit of time to unpack why that happened so often for me, right? And I eventually came to realize that it's because I was feeling powerless in my life situation. So I wanted to like, feel like I did have some power over something else and I would take it out on my business basically. Right. And it looked like just me putting my business on the chopping block over and over and over again. And honestly, that did not help anything. It did not like it did not help the life thing that was going on. And it sure as heck did not help me or my business. Right. There was literally like no correlation between my business and the life event. But then I would essentially turn my life thing into a business problem. Right. So for example, my grief over quitting my PhD, it honestly has nothing to do with my business. I was sad about my life and my PhD, not because of my business, right? It wasn't because of my business's fault that I quit my PhD and moved to Singapore. Those are life problems, right? It's not a business problem. And the emotions that I was feeling, it had nothing to do with my business. So in the past year, I, whenever life things happen, I had to learn to take back my power and realize that I did have control over those life situations without making it mean anything about my business. And while I was learning that lesson, because I was constantly putting my business on the chopping block, one more thing I had to learn was to commit to what I cared about, which is my business and what I do within the scope of my business. Just because I was unhappy about something going on in my life or even something related to my business, I had to learn to continue to stay committed to my work as a coach, as a content creator, and as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. <laughs> I had to stay committed to my work as a coach, content creator, and entrepreneur. Okay, sorry for slurring my words there and stumbling over my words. Okay, so that means that I had to constantly recommit to my business. I constantly had to remind myself why my work matters. And I had to continue to remember who I am and why I do what I do. And this work, it's ongoing. Being committed to your work and the impact and income that you're here to create, it's very likely something that all of us will have to continue working on and recommitting to throughout our lifetime as an entrepreneur. 
So with that, that concludes the four most profound lessons I've learned over the past year since officially quitting my career in research and since then pursuing a full-time career as a coach and entrepreneur. And I also just want to say that as someone who really struggled a lot with the belief that because I had my own mental health things going on and because I had some life stressors going on because of that, I'm not where I want to be. And I really struggled with that thought of like, because of XYZ going on, I, I wasn't where I wanted to be in my business. I really hope that if you're also someone who's currently navigating certain stressors or circumstances, and now you're also feeling like you're struggling to keep up in your business, I I just really sincerely hope that the lessons I share today can be helpful to you in some way. And I also hope that through the conversation today, we can start to rewrite our story about ourselves and reframe how we view ourselves in our business because we honestly, honestly can feel like a hot mess sometimes, but still be able to create amazing things in this world. We can struggle deeply with certain things, but still be able to help other people on a very profound level. We can feel like we're lacking in certain areas, but absolutely thrive in another area. It doesn't have to be so like black or white. So one or the other, like I must have it all together and have the perfect thoughts and mindset in order to have a perfect business, right? We're allowed to go through human experiences and have human emotions a lot of the times, right? If not all of the time, we're allowed to go through life and feel whatever we're feeling. It is valid and it doesn't make us any more invalid as an entrepreneur. And I hope that this message is really able to shine through in the lessons that we unpack for today. All right. So that's all I got. That's all I got for you all today. Thank you so, so much for tuning into today's episode. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Sounds good. Awesome. Let's get to work.